Kasen Manso is a town in the central region of Ghana. It is located 40 kilometers along the Cape Coast Kumasi Highway. The town is well known for the role it played as a slave market during the slave trade. Kasen Manso is considered as a sacred place of remembrance and it's rightfully so. Africans were never seen again after leaving this place and just imagine families being separated forever. It was the final link in slavery routes from northern Ghana and was known to have been the largest slave market for the merchants supplying slaves on the fort and castles on the coast. Transatlantic slave trade came about when people were needed to work on agriculture and mines. Since the Europeans were not suitable to the climate and not available to survive the tropical disease during the agriculture and mines work, it was transatlantic slave because already manufactured goods such as tobacco, beets, clothes, guns, etc. were taken from Europe to Africa in exchange of human beings. Then the exchange goods, which are the human beings, are shaped to work on plantation and mines. From the slave labor, the merchant then returned to Europe with the produce from the slave labor plantation, which are the cloth, sugar, tobacco, etc. The transport of slaves from Africa to America forms the middle passage of the triangular slave. This emancipation day also serves as a source of income to individuals. There was an exhibition of traditional cloth, traditional drums, African bags, slippers, artifacts, food and drinks such as sobolo, meda, hamwine, fufu, etc. Most vendors made a lot of sales. Between the economy, in the ancestral park, we have the ancestral graveyard where galleries and portraits of famous of the emancipation can be found with ancestral graves by the mortals remains of two enslaved Africans. Madame Crystal from Jamaica, from United States of America, reinterred in 1998 the memorial wall, which is the wall of return, is where most Africans write their names on the wall, indicating they have found their roots. There was an epitaph which pays tribute to some prominent people who were involved in the slavery. Captured Africans were forced to trek barefoot through the harsh bush and over rough terrain. For some time, captured Africans were forced to trek barefoot through the harsh bush over rough terrain. For some time, hundreds of miles headed to the Gold Coast dungeon. They suffered abuse, were starved, and beaten into compliance by the hired drivers of the slave merchants. Many lives and spirits were were lost along this hazardous journey. On the way to Coastal Dungeon, the slave merchants stopped at Don Consio, which is the slave river in Asim Manso. Captured Africans were allowed to recuperate there after their long journey here. They were well fed and rested for several days or weeks. The merchants knew they could guarantee higher prices if they appear healthy and strong. Don Consio is where captives will take their last bath in waters of their native land. The Portuguese began the inhuman practice of branding. They would use a red hot branding iron to burn an identifying mark onto the skin of captives. The burn mark could leave a scar on the shoulder, the breast, or the upper lamp to show ownership. Other times, branding was used to show that proper duty had been paid. When it was time to leave, they were sorted out, leaving the weak ones behind tin trees. Where the unthinkable happens, the stronger captives continue walking for approximately 40 miles to Cape Coast Castle. Still shackled and chilling. Duma Nyamiche reporting for Nakak TV. <laughs>